Hey everybody, it's Mike Peasall, pastor at Gateway Christian Center. Uh, today is Wednesday, September 6th, and this is Mike's midweek message. Thanks for joining me today. So my uh, my topic today is, is uh, entitled Allies and Adversaries. Uh, and I've been thinking about this for several weeks. I've, I've made myself several notes. And then uh, as I, I thought about today, um, I actually... It lined up with something I was reading in my daily quiet time from the book of Acts. Um, it's also, there's a story in the book of Mark that's, uh, that's, that talks to this. But more importantly, I guess, well, maybe not more importantly, but but um, I was looking at someone's post this morning on Facebook, and the topic of it was this very thing about how um, there is so, it's so easy to have division even within a group of people who have a, a very similar goal or a similar purpose, but um, you can begin to nitpick each other about, well, you know, you don't think this and you do think this and you do this behavior or you don't do this behavior. So, so we're, we're not going to be allies. We're going to be adversaries. And, um, and let me just say to those of us who are in the body of Christ, we have plenty of adversaries, okay? We don't need to create more within the body of Christ. Um, here, here's a newsflash. You may not know everything there is to know about everything there is to know. Um, I know I don't. And, uh, and I know that we live, we, live, we live according to what we believe is true. And, and that's what we should do. And we do know that there are some things that are non-negotiable in the scripture. Uh, you know, Jesus uh, and, and Jesus only. And, and, and there are some things like that. But then when we get, we get on those other issues, um, we, we can find it very easy for that to become uh, a dividing point between uh, people we shouldn't be divided from. Um, you know, it's always funny you talk about there are people you work with, but you wouldn't go on vacation with them or you'd cry at their funeral, but you don't want to go on vacation with them. So, yeah, it, we're not ta I'm not talking about, you know, every situation, every circumstance, but I am talking about that right now in the body of Christ, we need more than ever to uh, to to walk around in grace and in love and and uh, so that we can stay united in the body of Christ. Now I am I'm making that qualification in the body of Christ. I mean we see in our world we see in, in the United States of America we've never seen a time uh, I don't think we've ever seen a time where there's this much division between people uh, for you know anything and that's all that's all the media talks about is the division. Uh, when in, in actuality, if you're like me, you probably, you know, find very few people that you uh, that that you feel uncomfortable around or that you feel uh, are against you or whatever. Um, so but but back to the thing this morning, the the post that I saw, part of the wording was we must work together. We will never 100 percent agree. And that is so true. Um, you know, if if you're married, you know that you never are in 100 percent agreement with your spouse. Um, and that's actually a good thing. If if both of you thought identical about everything, one of you is completely unnecessary. We are, we are called to, to teamwork with each other. Um, you think about all the different denominations. Yeah, there are some differences in denomination between, you know, um, infant baptism and, and things like that and and uh or or you know do you do you believe in miracles do you not believe in miracles how do you how do you do this how do you do that but do we have in common jesus and jesus only that our salvation is based on jesus and jesus only so um what i was reading this morning was from the book of acts acts chapter 15 and um uh, this is this is what the first five verses of Je uh, of Acts 15 says this. Uh, but some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now we're we're finding the same thing. We're doing a study on Titus right now, and there were they they, they said there were Judaizers who were coming in and saying, well, no, it's Jesus and uh, circumcision. It's Jesus and this. It's Jesus and that. Okay. It's Jesus and nothing else, okay? That's that's the point. So verse 2, after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with him. Now, they have dissension and debate with them, but they don't they don't say, okay, we're going to start our own group. We're, we're starting our own thing. Uh, you're out of the herd. We're, we're going to start our own thing. We're taking you off the Christmas card list. You know, they don't do that. They do have a dissension. They do have a debate, but then 
they they come together and they make a decision. So Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of, of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers. Now, literally, they're on their way to have a discussion about th these, these Gentile converts and how they don't do everything the Jewish converts did. They don't value everything. They don't have the same background. They don't have the same tradition. And as they're going to have this you know, meeting this trial, this con convocation about this thing, they're just, they're talking up about how awesome it is that they have all these Gentile believers that they didn't have before. They're excited about it. And then finally, um, verse, verse four, when they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. They, here's what God's been doing. Some believers who belong to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the laws of Moses. Now, we know there are 10 commandments, the 10 commandments. And then there were a lot of other laws that, that came up during that Exodus period, during that time in the wilderness. Um, there, there, were, there, were, there were a lot of laws, and those are the Mosaic laws. But also the Pharisees had come up with a few hundred more of their own laws where they had taken it and, and, and they had interpreted. And these weren't necessarily, um, they didn't necessarily go along with Moses's law, but that's what they wanted. We've, we've said some things and because we want you to respect us, we want you to do what we say you should do. So Christianity is not about keeping the law. It, it can't be. Because if it's about keeping the law, none of us will be able to do that. None of us will keep the law successfully. Even if you start today with a clean slate and forget about the last how many ever years, you will not succeed in keeping the law perfectly on your own. That's the reason Jesus had to come. So uh, it's the sacrifice of Christ. So everybody has their own idea. And everybody, everybody's pretty sure that their idea is the best idea, is the right idea, is the only idea. And, and so they're, they're putting this out there. So what is an ally? An ally, according to the definition, ally, a form, formally cooperating with another for a purpose. Combine or unite resources for mutual benefit. So an ally doesn't necessarily mean that you have all things in common at all times, in every circumstance, in every situation. That, that's, not, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about all of us being exactly the same, having the exact same thought, having the exact same emotion, having the exact same response to something. It's, it's about cooperating with another for a purpose. Combine or unite resources for mutual benefit. In other words, you can be an ally with somebody in one circumstance and you won't be their ally in another circumstance. You, you may even be their adversary. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a business strategy meeting and their business strategy goes very different from your business strategy. Well, during that meeting, you may be adversaries as you both, uh, as you both debate about which is the better way to go. But then once the decision is made, then you become allies and you say, okay, how are we both going to work together to, to reach this goal, to reach this objective. And what is an adversary? An adversary is one's opponent in a contest or conflict. If, you, um, if you've got a brother, sister in your church and you know they, they believe something you don't believe, you should sit down and have a lunch with them and say, man, I love you and I want you to help me understand why do you believe what you believe about this topic? Uh, I, I see that you do this and I don't do this. Tell me why, why is it you do that? Number one, you may help them see that, you know, they're wrong and you're right. Or number two, you may realize that you're wrong and they're right. Or even better, you may realize that both of you are just doing what you believe the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. And you're okay with that. You can let the other person do something that you think. Uh, I wouldn't do that if it was me, but but I don't I don't lack love or respect for you because you obviously are doing what you're doing because you believe that's what the Holy Spirit is calling you to do. So these these Christians had Jesus in common. They did have some differences. So I guess the the question is, 
what's more important, Jesus or our differences? And this is, this is to every believer out there who right now you're being pulled apart by the world. You're being pulled apart. You, you're like, no, Mike, the world's not pulling me apart. It's, it's my belief about this or belief about that. Okay, if you're really pressing into Jesus, those differences are not going to divide you. They, they, they'll encourage you to, to discuss and might even bring you into a better relationship. You can, ha you can go and talk to somebody about something you disagree with that they're doing or that they disagree with you're doing. And you might actually walk away from that having a deeper respect, still not agreeing with them, but you'll have a deeper respect, a deeper love. You will, you'll find yourself defending that person, even though you don't agree with what they're doing. You'll defend them because now you know, yeah, but I understand their motivation. I understand why they're doing what they're doing. And it's funny that Paul and Barnabas, they're the perfect example of this because Paul and Barnabas didn't agree with everybody, uh, didn't agree with each other all the time about everything. They, they, they could have some pretty good, some pretty good conversations, heated conversations themselves. So um, it goes on, uh, Acts, Acts chapter 15, if we look down in verse 8 through 11, and God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Okay, now, God makes no distinction between these people. But yet the people make a distinction between these people. Okay, well, who's right? Well, God is right. God is the one, God is the one who sets our example. And if God finds if God finds no distinction between Jew and Gentile, slave and free man, male and female, if God finds no distinction, you and I as believers, as followers of that God, should not be so so quick to find distinctions and divisions. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on their neck that disciples that neither neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of our Lord Jesus, just as they will. So, obviously, we know that there are some non-negotiables in the Scripture, and those are the things that that we we just have to we have to stand strong, even if it puts division between us and 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 friends and family and and that. But most of the things that we're being divided about in the church right now. Um, are are not are not things that should be causing us to completely disassociate with should uh, we where we're 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 um we're publicly trying to try this person because uh I heard a pastor say something that I totally disagree with so I'm going to make I'm going to make every effort to ruin that man's reputation or or to uh to do to to let people in his church know that did you know that he actually thinks this that, that that doesn't benefit us. We have we have an enemy already. We have an adversary in in Satan, and he is doing everything he can do to bring division in the body of Christ. And we don't we don't want our adversary to have more influence on us than our, our Savior. So if you're struggling with somebody, there's a division between between you and a, and a fellow believer, and it is really you you feel like it's really causing a great divide. Have you taken that to Jesus? Have you gone to Jesus? Have you asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what what is what is it you would have me do in this situation? Is is it to to be very public in my disapproval of this person? Is it to go to them privately, or is it to go? You know what? We just disagree about an interpretation of Scripture, and just let it go. I think that's really important. Here here's a couple of questions. What's the goal? What's the desired outcome? If I've got somebody who their goal and my goal align, then we can be allies. Maybe not in every situation and every time, but if on this particular topic, their goal and my goal are the same goal, their desired outcome and my desired outcome is the same, we can be, we can be allies in this. Um, what is my motivation? What is, what is their motivation? And be careful. A lot of times I don't even know purely what my motivation is. I don't know if you're the same way, but what I almost never know <clears throat> is what another person's motivation is. I can't see their motivation. I, I, I can guess at it, and usually when I guess, I may be completely wrong. But what, but find out what is their motivation between um, the stand that they're taking. Why are they taking that stand? You may find that in that motivation, you are allies, or you may be adversaries. 
And then, um, and then I think the, the, the funnest one of all is to say, is it possible that my way is not the only way? Is it possible that my way is not the best way? Um, let me just go ahead and say, if you are convinced that your way is always the only way, and it's always the best way, you you really should just run for God of the universe because that's amazing that you're the only person who's who's never been wrong about anything. I'm I'm just saying that that we're not we're not perfect in everything that we think. We do have the mind of Christ, but we have to be we have to quiet our own uh, mind down sometimes so that we can hear the mind of Christ. Be 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 humble. Be vulnerable. Be willing to ask the Lord, Lord, am I wrong about this? Is 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 show me show me you know James says if you lack wisdom ask and it will be given to you generously and without reproach that that's a really good thought so uh, so finally I'll just leave you with this one of my favorite things to do in, in marriage counseling is is uh, I always like to say you know um, they they say the goal of marriage is for the two to become one and usually most marriages spend a lot of time fighting over which one they're going to become. Well, when you mix two people together, you're not going to have, you're not going to have one, you're not going to have one person, you're, you're not going to have one thing that looks just like one of those two people. It's a combination. It's when you blend together, you, you, you blend together chocolate ice cream and vanilla ice cream. You no longer have vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream. You now have a blend of those two. And that's beautiful. That's the way God has designed it to be. So whatever relationship you're in, don't let the goal for, for you to become, I want to I wanna completely take over this person, or I want this person to completely take over me. But come in, because what allies do is they use their strengths together in unity to accomplish a certain goal. I hope that you have a great week, and I will see you next Wednesday. God bless you.